Hey everyone, it's August 23rd on Tuesday. You're here at the weekly chaos community call. All of uh, your fellow chaotics are here with each other hanging out. Um, we have some things to chat about today. We have um, kind of a long agenda, which is exciting. So let's hop to it, uh, maybe. All right, here we go. Um, yeah, so if you wanna add your name, do we need to drop these minutes probably in chat again? Maybe, you know. Um, yeah, tell us how you wake up in the morning. I'm just always curious of like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm curious about that. It's kind of a weird thing to be curious about, I guess. <laughs> now that I say that out loud, it seems weird, but I don't know. I just changed my alarm. But usually my dogs get me up early, um, but sometimes they do sleep in. And so I set an alarm on my phone and I just use it to play a song, some of my favorite songs. So it's kind of nice. I kind of dig that and I'm gonna keep doing that. Well, Matt G just wakes up naturally because he's an early riser. Yeah, I'm the same way. I can find my... Yeah, I so want to know how I wake up when my alarm goes off at 5 a.m. on Monday morning. <laughs> no, don't like that at all. <laughs> That's too early. There's no song that would make that a present experience. <laughs> no, I can tell you that. <laughs> Absolutely not. I agree. No song in the world could make that more palatable. <laughs> I agree. Um, okay, so we always, as always, I just want to stress this. If you have something you'd like to discuss with the community, you are more than welcome to put this on the agenda. As well, I haven't said this in a while, so I'll say it again. You did not have to turn your camera on. We don't care. You can leave it off and you can just chat with us in the chat. That's totally fine if you don't want, even want your, um, your speakers and your microphone on. So just chat with us. It's totally fine. Okay, so last week we um, were talking about our community handbook and the way it's getting restructured from Ruth and uh, Shoya's Google Season of Docs project. We are looking for some maybe inspiration, as you guys recall, if you were here last time. Um, we're looking for some inspiration. Oh, added to the issue. Oh, good. I didn't actually look and see if people did that. I should have done that. So this is kind of what we were thinking um, for organization and structure, um, and nobody added anything <laughs> except for German Prey put some some suggestions on there. So if anybody does, uh, in the course of your daily poking around the internet, come across some kind of um, structured contributor guide or community handbook from another project that you really like, please let them know. Put it in here. I, I dropped this one in. I think Drupal, they do a lot of things really well. Um, so I put this in here. I, I don't actually know if, if this is good for us, like to follow something similar to this, but I did put it in here. Just um, the ways that people can kind of, um, what's the word I want? Digest the information, I guess. So look, find things what they need. But this also is kind of going into the knowledge base a little. So I don't know. I mean, I personally, I was going to say, I had no problem with the way our handbook looked, like the work that Josh Garat had done. Yeah, I, yeah. It. I thought it looked really nice. I just always felt like it was like sort of just disconnected from yeah. the website. You know what I mean? Like it was always this like island that was alone. Out yeah. There. I actually kind of, I, I did not mind the structure of it. Yeah, I was okay with it as well. It was the structure was fine. I think having it, like you said, isolated from everything else that made it hard to find and it made it hard to understand how to how to contextualize um, things that are different, if you will. So just to refresh everyone's memory, we have an about section, we have a community section, we have a contributing section, we have mentorships, we have DEI badging, and that's it. So if you do maybe have some suggestions, um, yeah, you can drop them in this 
issue right here and I'll put that in the chat as well. But if you think of like maybe be a little different, might work better because um, we're kind of thinking about changing it to uh, about the working groups, community initiatives, local communities, um, how to contribute, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, media outreach governance and community resources. So that's kind of what they're proposing as far as a restructure goes. Hey, Sean, can you mute for a second or? Yeah. Oh, I'll mute him. Sure. He's muted. <laughs> I didn't know who that was. Well, he's talking now and he's muted. Sorry, Sean. You'll have to unmute yourself if you want to talk. You're not, you're not fully muted. <laughs> We're stuck in a... <laughs> oh, did I mute him forever? I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't know you had that power. <laughs> I didn't either. Wow. All right. Don't mess with the moderator. That's right. I, I can click what this. What happens ask, if I hit ask to unmute? I click that and nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. You might have to leave and come back. Like the closed door button on an elevator, but <laughs> doesn't do anything. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, that, this is how our day's going. So I'm really sorry, Sean. I feel really bad about that. Um, oh, it looks like Matt C dropped some some links in here. Thank you. Should we look at these now? Actually, maybe we should come back to these. If we uh, have time, honestly. We'll um, they're mostly just like what you should have in um, a good handbook versus documentation and stuff like that. So I was just recently doing this for other other projects and it came to mind. Perfect. We'll make sure uh, Ruth and Shoya see those as well. I think Ruth's here. I'm not, I doubt Shoya is because it's literally midnight her time. So yeah, probably not here. Yeah, Ruth is here. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah, I'll take note of them and also share it with Joya. We're having a okay. meeting this week with Kevin, so. Perfect. Awesome. All right, so let's hop on to some new items. We have published the ChaosCon schedule. If you have not seen it, it's beautiful and exciting. And it's right here, all the way down here. Here we go. Um, and if you are a speaker and you have not sent in a headshot and or if you have a pre-recorded talk or your slides, um, send those to me. I would really like to have those. And I'm going to email everybody anyway, but if you're here, I'm telling you in person. So yes, you will also get an email from me, but we would love those things from you. So thank you to Matt G for pulling that together and also for Kevin for getting that published and on the website. Um, we still are looking for somebody to help us with live streaming. So, cause we're gonna be a little tight on uh, chaos staff and everybody's gonna be busy. So if we do have somebody that has that kind of knowledge and is gonna be in person in Dublin, we would be super, super grateful if you could help at least get it set up to live stream. Um, just reach out to any of us, I think, on the ChaosCon committee, me, Matt G, Georg, Sean, Don, pretty much anybody, <laughs> pretty much anyone in chaos. No, um, just reach out to us and we'll um, we'll get you, we'll get you hooked up with the right people. That would be amazing. And if you are attending, there is a Slack for ChaosCon where virtual or uh, various things are discussed about like getting together for coffee or kind of when people are traveling, that kind of stuff. So make sure you join that community if you're gonna be there. Any comments, questions, anything to add on ChaosCon? I, I did go ahead and I got like coffee and tea and some pastries for the day, just cause it is in the morning. I thought that would be nice. And we have sponsorship, so I think that's reasonable. Um, and then I think everything is set up with the LF. So they've been, I just want to say they've been really helpful. I've been working with Erica, who um, 
she's just been she's just been great. So I think we're all covered. I think we have everything we need. The room should be set up. Um, so thanks to the LF for helping out. Great. That's good news. Anybody have any other questions, anything on Chaos Con before we move along? Sorry, I'm late. My entire computer decided it did not like its new peripherals in my office. Okay, so it wasn't my fault that you <laughs> no, got No, no. It, it, I had it connected to other peripherals at home, and when I came to my office, it was like, these are not my peripherals. I'm going to give you trouble. And rebooting, it seemed to work. It yeah, always chaos. does. Yeah. I don't know what we said about chaos con, but I think we're in good shape as far as I know. Yeah, pretty much. I think we're good. But just as a um, note too, just on the live streaming, I mean, if if we just really don't have the people to help with the live streaming, I, I can reach out to the LF too. They do offer recording services. You know, it wouldn't be live stream, but we would at least have everything recorded on site that it's we can be expensive later. though isn't it did we discuss the live streaming issues pertaining to my injury it is pretty expensive um i don't have the number kevin in terms of how much it costs but if i recall it was pretty pricey and sean I, what was your question uh i was just asking if uh, my injury had been discussed and the reason i can't be here be there no okay yeah, I broke my foot in four places jumping down some stairs because I thought I was 12. Um, it actually doesn't hurt that much, but my doctor says I need to get it. I need to get a surgery. And so, and he doesn't recommend international travel for, I think, just reasons of if something happens when I'm overseas, that would be bad. So I'm not going to Chaos Con, so I'm sorry. Uh, but I, I think we can, I think I can get a, somebody to get there with the equipment that I have set it up it's not really that hard how was it feeling like 12 again say that again Dior. and I, I think kevin you might have some uh, wind in your microphone thank you that's not yeah that's not i was um i wanted to know how did it feel like being 12 again oh it felt great until i landed and then it felt like that didn't feel right. And then it did, it just ached a little bit. Honestly, it doesn't hurt unless I walk for an entire day and then I can't really walk the next day. It's a very strange thing. I've never broken any bones before in my entire life. So, but this doesn't feel like, like breaking an arm feels like it would feel. It's not this ongoing acute pain. It's more like a dull, the less I walk, the better I feel pain. Uh, I still had something to say regarding the uh, regarding the live streaming. I'm the one who did it before. It's pretty rudimentary, but we could do it with the tools we had. If anybody uh, is willing to take that on, I can uh, kind of show you what I did last time. And uh, uh, I uh, I won't be there, but I can at least give you the information you would need to uh, do some simple live streaming. I'm going to try to send one of my students to take care of it. I I just literally got the, I had the appointment with my doctor at four o'clock yesterday afternoon or something like that. Okay. And, um, uh, send them my way if, if you're in, if uh, they need some more training on that, uh, if they're good, don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, if they can go all of my students video game using Twitch. So I think they'll be able to figure it out. That's about <laughs> where I am too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Right, go ahead. All right, so um, we're going to move on. Uh, re real quick, Sean, when do you think you'll know if you're going to send one of your students? By the end of today or tomorrow morning. Okay. It's really just a question of me finding them here on the second day of school. OK. Uh, I'm, I, uh, I'm getting authorization from the university just in case. So okay. if, you, if you can't send a student, let me know, and I will try to speed up that process. I appreciate uh, that. And if Thanks, you can, man. then I will cancel the process. Well, if you, if, yeah, okay. We can talk offline. Okay. If, yeah. Okay.
thanks. Thanks, everybody, for helping sort that out. Um, the next thing on our agenda, I just wanted to recognize Precious O for um, making it through her outreachy internship. I don't think she's here today on the call. I don't see her. Um, but Precious has done a really great job. Outreach is a little bit in, intense. <laughs> like there's a lot going on um, from the outreachy organizer. There's like a lot of assignments, a lot of like they require daily standups and um, they just require a lot. They ask a lot of their interns and um, Precious did a great job. Um, not only did she help with the auger documentation, which was the whole point of what she was trying to do, but she really did a whole lot more. And I hope she sticks around. I hope she watches this and sticks around. Um, I have a feeling she will. She's been so active in our DEI working group. She's even facilitated a few meetings. She helped us review the old metrics and offer suggestions, approve some PRs to get those suggest suggestions merged in. Um, she's been really active in the Chaos Africa Slack channel, really welcoming to everyone. And she's also been helping us develop new metrics in the DEI working group. I think she's also been attending the DEI badging meetings as well. So, and this meeting, usually she's here. So um, just a great, great job to Precious. Shout out to her, um, fantastic work and um, really happy that she made it all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Cause and, that reaches a lot. So and, yeah. And I would just like to echo how much improvement there's been in the auger documentation, thanks to Precious's attention and hard work. So uh, I pr really appreciate all, all that Precious has done. She's done a phenomenal job. So yay, good job. And if anybody is interested, um, last week we were looking for some volunteers to chat with her informally about um, different careers in um, in open source and just kind of like having that chat about like your own career and how your path went, so just to give her a little bit of, a little more context around like what's out there. Um, as I know, she's now trying to figure out what her next steps are um, with regard to technical writing and also software development. So. Um, I think the more people she can chat with, the better about, you know, just kind of like your own experiences and, and how you how you got to where you are right now. Because I think for many of us, our paths have been winding. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not really a straight line a lot of times. So I think that's helpful for, for our, any of our men mentees to have that kind of context. So if you're interested in that, just reach out to her on Slack or, or reach out to me or Sean and we can connect you as well. Which precious O is this? Because they, we have several on our Slack channel. I think uh, they're all the same uh, precious uh, O. Elizabeth? Yes. Armstrong? Yes, I think it would be a good idea, a very great idea, if one of uh, the ladies can also reach out to her because I've had a working session with her and it was really fantastic. She's a great person, a lot of enthusiastic to grow. But then, you know, sometimes it's always good to hear from different people, different experience. So if one yes. of the, if somebody like Iziko, Amy, or any other person can just reach out to her to with more, just to, to give her some encouragement, that might be something very great. Completely agree. And in answer to your question, Vinya, um, I, we have not discussed it, but I would imagine that we will do so. Uh, we're recording the um, she code after, sorry, Vinya's question was, um, are we going to do the outreachy slash uh, Google Summer of Code podcast like we have in the past? Um, yes, we, that is usually our plan. Um, so I will uh, connect with Precious and also Sean, we can sort out when we want to do that. Yeah. We're recording the She Code Africa one tomorrow, so um, yeah. So we'll, well, as soon as the Google season of Docs is finished and Google Summer of Code is finished, also we will probably be reaching out to all of you students participating to do um, just a quick podcast about your experiences and your projects and things. So, all right, let's go on. Um, I see the next item says help wanted evolution working group needs a new coordinator. I'm guessing that was you, Sean, that put that on there. Uh, yeah, so evolution is one of our, I think maybe the even the original working group. 
And over the course of the last year, I've gotten really heavily involved in the DEI stuff, the metrics model work. Obviously, I helped maintain Augur and co-chair risk and co-chair chaos as a whole. And I'm realizing that I don't have the energy that I think is required to drive uh, evolution forward right now. Um, and I've been at it for so long. I think, I think that working group could really use a new perspective. And, and I think, you know, one of the options, of course, would be to not have it anymore. The argument against that is that the metrics model working group is now pretty actively requesting new kinds of evolution metrics. So I'm seeking a volunteer or chaos is seeking a volunteer, which I would be happy to mentor for a period of time to sort of reignite and have some time to focus on evolution, which, which I haven't had certainly over the summer with all of the mentoring and other activities that I've been engaged with. Yeah, Sean, I think I really appreciate what you have been doing thus far and it's something we really look forward to always uh, trip in. I will not mind to come in, it's just that for the moment. That'd be I'm great, sure Armstrong. So, yeah, so I mean, when our things will become somehow stable, I will really put more force, but I'm not mind to to start uh, uh, picking up from where you, you are you're living. I really appreciate the work you have been doing. Oh, well, thank, thank you, Armstrong. And, and, I think, and I think also Kevin has been of, of great help and many others who have been working in collaboration. So we cannot keep that effort just to go like that. We need to sustain it. Thank you. I, I agree. And, and that's why I'm asking for some, a volunteer uh, to help. And like I said, I won't just yeah. like, I won't drop it on you. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I won't just drop it. I'll, I'll be around long enough to mentor and, and provide whatever support okay. and, you know, historical record is necessary. I, I just, it would really be helpful if there yeah. was another person who is driving the agenda in that working group because there's only some, there's like some limit on the number of things you can executively function effectively around and I've reached it. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Science got your back in there. All right, so are you actually volunteering? Thank you, Armstrong. Um, the next yes, meeting yes, is- Yes, I, I am. Thank you. So the next meeting is in two yes, weeks. Yes, as I told you, I'm, I'm, vol I'm uh, transiting. So presently I'm in the hospital, but I'm getting better and uh, I'll be picking up a new assignment, let's say in uh, September. So I will, I will pilot, I will fit in in my program. So you're in the hospital, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. No, I went through some surgery, but it, things are getting better. Wow, okay, so nobody can help co-lead evolution if they haven't been or are scheduled for a surgical procedure, I think is the, <laughs> is the rule. <laughs> 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 I hope you feel better, Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting better, much more better. Yeah. But I'm, I'll, I'll volunteer, I mean. Thank you, Armstrong. And I think it's, I think it's always effective if some of the work, if the working groups have a couple of co-leads, because not everybody can be uh, ready at all times. So if, if anyone wants to join Armstrong or explore that, I, I think I found that that works most effectively when there's another person that's working with you. But for now, that can can be me while you while we get you up to speed. Sounds good. Thank you, Armstrong. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, once again, Armstrong shows how awesome he is. So thank you. <laughs> That's that's fantastic. We really appreciate that, Armstrong. And I should also say, um, just to kind of echo what Sean said, um, if I mean, I, I it's not really up to me, but if as far as I think most people are concerned, if that's if a better time or day would work better for your schedule and for that, you know, for that group's schedule, like that, that's something that can also be changed. I don't know if we really said that, but. Um, it's not, and nothing's set in stone. So if you would prefer to move that around to make it a little easier for you, Armstrong, then, you know, feel free to do whatever you want to do with it, really. 
Yeah, we'll see. But I think the day so far looks good to me, but we'll see how, how things unfold. Okay, perfect. Awesome. All right, so uh, the next item on our agenda is a new project um, that has come from an old issue. So um, we had this issue in the DEI working group around inter doing an interview campaign with some underrepresented groups in open source that were not part of chaos. Um, basically, I'll let you all read this, but um, essentially the gist of it is that we wanted to make sure that uh, we were covering all of our bases because, you know, chaos, we're limited by our own lens and the things that we focus on is are things that are, you know, just kind of like right in front of us. So um, we, we thought it would be great to do an interview campaign with people not in chaos that represent a wide variety of um, differences and um, just get their feedback on our metrics and also maybe like what holes we're missing, like where are gaps that we haven't developed metrics around yet that are important to, to see. So um, this issue has been open for a while um, and it's not because we didn't think it was important. We just didn't really have the, the resources or the bandwidth to elevate it to something that was a super high um, immediate priority. Um, so, uh, a couple weeks ago during our regular DEI working group, we'd go through old issues and this came up and Anita, who is also on the call, was part of that conversation and she stepped up and expressed an interest and put together this absolutely amazing proposal to do some work on moving this forward. So Anita, I will let you, if you would like to just talk about that a little bit um, and how people can get involved if they would like to join this um, campaign. Is that okay? I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, the draft says it all, but I'll just give like a quick rundown. So this um, this project has been created in this doc, and um, the idea is to reach out to non chaos members who are members of the underrepresented group to give their response or their thoughts on metrics they're currently um, working on in chaos and how it actually relates with real life uh, diversity equity and inclusion um, practices in their communities here so this so far the document so far has um, provided how i'm going to go about this from um, getting the questions for each of these individuals to how to reach out to them and um, get their feedbacks and then create it in form of um, a report. I think that will be the end of it. So, so if you have any thoughts on how we can um, go about this project, I can see so many persons commenting. Thank you all so much. If you still have so much comments, bring it down so I can just get started with this. And I think if you, um, so... Anita, Anita, once more, thank you for this great initiative. Uh, I dropped some few comments and I just wanted us to hold a kind of uh, discussion on it because this project is uh, it's of great interest and we, uh, making it a report is, is good, but I think it's, it qualifies for something that can be published. And I'm ready and willing to help also in this uh, area with my expertise to push out this kind of work to one of these peer review journal, journal conferences. We have the, the idea overall, we have the data, we have a lot of things that can really qualify and quantify our work. And it will benefit not only a handful of open source community, it will go a long way to benefit the academia uh, research in different directions. So if people are interested, and if we are also willing to gain this kind of experience, uh, I mean, we can push it one step further. It all depends on uh, willingness. I mean, I really appreciate the fact that you can still end at the report, but then that effort will still, you know, we need to reach higher feasibility. A lot of people have been talking about a lack of research in so many areas in open source and i agree with them last week i think in the slack channel uh, there was a couple of discussion in that respect we have an opportunity here where we can inform ourselves and others 
So if you have any doubt in what I suggested or any how we could you know drive this, just uh, put it down and then we can pick up from there. Oh yes, definitely. I'll be reaching out um, to you for your thoughts because it looks like you're really good with um, research and all of that. So I'll definitely need all your all of your thoughts on this. Okay. As I just said earlier, might be this week, I might be a little bit slow, but I'm reading most of the messages that I'm there. Is this so uh, always respond. Yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Now, is, is this discussed in the, the DEI meeting? Yes. Okay. So I have a I have a fair amount of experience. Uh, doing interviews and I'd be I'd be happy to help out with this if, if you'd like uh, yeah. so if uh, if it's on the agenda for the DEI meeting uh, let me know and I will make sure that I'm there yes Kevin is understating his interview experience by the way Ruth go ahead yeah um, well done Anita this looks like really really good and yeah I Plus one to what um, Armstrong said, um, you know, making it a research really, um, I think it would go way further than a report. And I also wanted to add that the talk I have um, at um, OSS EU, it's going to be in, I think in, it's going to be in the section of the conference for the, the Diversity Inclusion Summit. So I could also add this talk, this um, campaign, maybe as a call to action towards the end of my talk, so that people, I know it's going to be like in um, the diversity inclusion summit. My talk is um, sectioned in that area, so I would add it out. And I think we can also, what we can also do is, you know, for the interviewers we are going to get, interviews we are going to get with my maybe add the form link and people can sign up or I don't know how the process is going to be but I, I think we'll discuss this better in DI group um DI meeting so well done would, would it would it be against your I don't know if you have an IRB but would it be possible to ask for GitHub user IDs for people if we promise to keep it a confidential or would that compromise the the process no it wouldn't i think the we'll be Do asking we... for mm -hmm. the um personal details like email in case we want to reach out to them for one-on-one -on -one interviews so i think the um, github repos will definitely be part of that so i think i think if we had the for the people who are informants if we had their github user id it would be possible for us to characterize any differences that are visible in the ways that those repositories that people are active in operate. And I think it would be interesting to see if, if there are practices inside the projects where individuals participate that correspond with more or less of a feeling of being welcome, for example. Yeah. That is, that is a great idea. And I think that also Sean falls in line with the second phase of the study where telemetry data could be used to also triangulate the perspective, the interview perspective. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes Excellent. what people say and what you find, yeah, we need to really bring out this kind of findings to, unless yeah. we can contradict, we can contrast, yeah. It's a great point. Yeah, and this is, I think, some of, the, some of the kind of research where I've seen, I don't know what your plans are, but I think a, like a periodic discussion among interested parties to sort of ferret out or, or tease out some insights from, from that triangulating point would be, I think, pretty cool and productive. Not to yeah. extend your scope, you know, you set a scope. So, yeah. I think Anita planned also to do some kind of survey, like a, a, a survey. And in that perspective, from the interview, they will collect some the, the those GitHub or other form of communication in the survey as well. Because survey will really be designed to capture a good essence of quantitative aspect. But then they will make the interview to really be qualitative, like more open-ended. 
In that way, they capture a wide spectrum of data. Then now we will use now some sort of uh, telemetry data. Telemetry is just a way of saying that, like we can go into the repositories where they have been collaborating to see how they, they involve in that community in terms of their commits, all these kind of technical things. Yeah, I had that in mind and I I mean, we will, yeah. Sounds awesome. If, if you want to help or advice or participation, uh, Certainly, this is the kind of thing I've done a lot, triangulating interview data and yeah. trace data. Mm -hmm. I like the, I really like the idea of uh, connecting those two together. Uh, I, I do think uh, if we're going to have to have a little bit of a bridge between the two, and perhaps we can add that with some uh, kind of focused interview questions about about their about how they operate within github right mm -hmm. so in addition to the uh the questions uh uh the the main purpose of the, the interviews uh katie you had your hand up did you still want to say something no, I will look in a little bit more. I think that there is a couple of other open source communities that have DEI groups that might have some good input. I just sent their leaders messages to see if any of their, um, if they're still active. So they okay. would be really good people contacts to reach out to that might have people who would be able to do interviews and have input. Awesome, thank you. Good. Do we have the questions planned out? What kind of questions are we going to ask them? Or is it an ideation right now? Oh, somebody's making some weird noise. Oh. Unless it's just me. That might be you, Vinod. Yeah, yeah. Somebody. can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's much better. Yeah, sorry, I had to switch microphone. So I'm asking, are the questions planned out or like what are we going to ask to the people or it's just the idea that that needs to be uh, worked on? So, um, I'll be curating the, the questions alongside the current um, DEI metric that we measure. So okay. um, the persons that choose to participate will have we we'll have like an overview of what metrics we are um, we are measuring now, and then the questions would um, go in this way: How um, how are these metrics measured in your community, or are they not measured in your community? Something like that. So, so it's more focused on those who are using the metric or not using the metric. Yes, that included. Okay. Okay. Okay, so again, if you are interested in being a part of this project, um, you can drop comments in this doc. You can also just <clears throat> add yourself to this issue here um, so that you're following kind of what's happening. Um, you can also attend the DEI working group meetings. Um, I assume that's where some of the, this work will happen. And you can also join our um, diversity inclusion working group on Slack as well and reach out to Anita as well. <laughs> so lots of ways to connect with this with this group. <clears throat> Thanks everybody for your feedback on this too. It's really it's really encouraging to see so many um, people who are excited about this. I think it's awesome. Yeah, thank you all for your suggestions. <laughs> all right, we have about eight minutes left. I see a couple more things on the agenda. So we're gonna go ahead and move up, move forward. Um, it says, uh, Matt G has been working on the spreadsheet for far too long. <laughs> really Matt, go ahead. To say. So I'm just, just so y'all know, I'm continuing to work. At, it's like a preoccupation of mine. I get started and then I can't seem to let it go. Um, so just kind of formatting the spreadsheet to make sure that, you know, things are where they need to be. Things end up kind of getting piled into columns sometimes. Um, so just kind of being consistent on like column headings. Um, we have a new column if you scroll to the right. I put in some panes in there too, so we can always see what metrics we're working on. 
Um, context tags, keyword tags, um, also the link to the Google box if we're doing revisions. So just, just so you know, when you're, when you're working on your metrics and you're working on your um, revisions of metrics, things will look similar, but they should be a lot more organized now. So I'm pretty much through comment. I haven't removed anything. I haven't like, you know, added outside of the context tags and keyword tags. Um, so thank you, Sophia. <laughs> um, the templates up at the top, the link to the repositories up at the top. So I'm trying to get all that just kind of organized in one place. Um, I, I haven't, I've done common DEI and value. I'll start working on risk, particularly now that we had that conversation. Or I'm sorry, I'll start working on evolution, particularly that we had that conversation earlier today. I think it could use some some cleanup. And then Sean, I don't know if you want me to to like work on the risk. Um, spreadsheet, or if you want to do that, I know sometimes you have a. Yeah, I mean, I think the I think the the risk. I don't know. I mean, I think the risk spreadsheet could use another perspective. I think I've been doing it for like five years now, so I I, I think it's, I'm <laughs> I think it needs a new perspective. Um, okay, it's not really a new perspective. I'm just trying to organize things. Like so, like for example, in sometimes in the link to the GitHub the metric on github we have google doc links in there and so i'm just creating another yeah. column called like a google doc link yeah to metric yeah google. i'm just kind of separating those things out that's great that's that's okay. great that certainly has been a source of confusion across all working groups and if if you have the time to clean that up that would be awesome i have the yes okay you have the motivation perhaps not yes. the time and <laughs> put that differently Yeah, this looks um, as you like, here's what risk was looking like. This is what our old tabs kind of look like. And it's it's OK, but you can like this is like kind of in out, not in perfect order, whereas like this is like beautiful. So yeah. good job. And it's all like locked so you can still scroll and still know what you're looking at. So yeah. thanks, Matt. I, yeah, I am certainly more tolerant of the lack of color coordinated order, but I can see how it's easier to read the other way. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Um, any other questions about the spreadsheet? We have five minutes left for our last topic. Okay, um, it looks like we have the chaos social media working group. I'm not sure who put that on there. Would you like to? I added that on here. Um, this is a conversation that I know we've had in the past. We have some social media channels and chaos has grown quite a bit. And so I want to see if we can maybe reboot that effort or regroup uh, do something in that area. Also, the chaos community uh, surrounding efforts, uh, there's a lot going on. And one of the things like, I wanted to share an event, I wasn't quite sure where to share it. It was not a chaos organized event, but it was related to community metrics. So I just put in the general Slack channel, but maybe we can figure that out also how we want to engage uh, and invite contribution or notifications about events that are going on outside of the core chaos that are still relevant. I know I talked with uh, Venia, who's been helping a lot with the podcast. And we have a lot of ideas with reusing, repurposing content, like the syndication. And there's a thread on Slack as well about how those kinds of efforts then get branded. So those are some, some things on, on my mind. Uh, just want to kick off that conversation. Should we be focused on social media or broader than that, like like marketing in general? 
like if we, we spun up a new working group would we want it just on social media or would we want it to be like a little bigger than that Well, if you want the work and the brand, so the big issue is you want the brand to be cohesive across an entire community and you want the work to be capable of spreading and you want the reward to not be concentrating. If you're going to be able to do all of that, you need to have a very hefty control over the brand at its nucleus and a very light handed control over the social media. So the only way that you can really do that uh, is by keeping them both in the same group. You would have to create a overarching social presence group where everyone's working together and everyone's maintaining the same policy structures. I wouldn't keep them separate is what I'm saying there. That was also my thought that would be good, like Don, what you said, to integrate or have more than just the narrow social media focus. Yeah, I'm just thinking that a lot of the other communities that I'm a part of, it's it's generally structured as, as kind of a marketing mar or marketing and comms, something like that group. Yeah, I, I, think... love, I love the idea of forming a working group to focus on this. So I'm just I'm just nitpicking at how we do it, but I love this idea. I certainly think forming a networking and comms or comms group, like you suggest, makes makes it clear that here's a group of folks with a specific role on the project and it, it it makes it unambiguous the purpose of that group I, I think if we aren't clear about the purpose of the group it becomes very ambiguous what the relationship between that group and the project is does the uh does the branding group currently have regular meetings or is this or are they just kind of working in a more informal way currently i think i feel it's informal currently no uh, no working group for the I know we had some uh, Nicole was helpful in creating some marketing materials. We have the website efforts um, which we can also build on. Um, so we have a lot of different things. There's some things going on on um, on Twitter. I think the Africa community is really active there. So kind of bringing all those together is what I'm thinking. I really like I really like the idea of having a, of merging them together and having kind of a, a marketing group. Uh, I don't think I don't think they would want to handle the uh, the website stuff. Uh, obviously, the website would fall under kind of the, those branding and design guidelines, but uh, like the the day-to-day the -day, uh, management of the website, I, I don't think that group would want to manage it. Uh, but uh, by the way, I, I love I love the idea of having a working group for marketing. The the likelihood, Kevin, for that is that we'll probably be discussing how to uh, have role-based permissions for changing on the website that is based upon automations and inputs. So instead of having like a stagnant web page, if you want to submit an event, we have a specific jot form and just filling out that jot form will bring it to an approval process that finds itself on the website without you having to touch it. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So we are actually over time. Um, can we, I don't want to say table this discussion because I know that means different things to different people as we found out from Dawn. Um, but can we continue this conversation next week? Uh, maybe also on Slack if we if we want um, in the what what like in the general, I guess, channel. If people have thoughts on it, want to connect async before next week. Um, that would be great. Because this certainly has merit, but it seems like we do have some things to kind of sort out together. So um, yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh, with that, I will stop sharing and you are all free to enjoy the rest of your day, evenings, whatever. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks again for coming. We'll see Thanks, you next everybody. time. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.